Hi everyone, I'm Cameron and I hope you are doing fantastically. I am going today to do... Today I'm going to do something that nobody needs or wants or is asking for, but I just felt like getting my voice out there. I said this before when I reviewed my Sigma makeup brushes. I was like the last one to the party to review those brushes. They've been covered extensively, but I said it before, does the world really need another review of this product? It's the Nars Sheer Glow Foundation. Everyone's heard about it. Everyone probably owns it already. I was the last one to consider buying it. But I got it recently and I remember thinking, if I love this foundation, I'm going to talk about it with my subscribers. If I don't, I'll just never mention even buying it. So the good news is I'm really happy with this foundation. I want to just talk about it, give my little opinion, and then see what you guys think. I bought Nars Sheer Glow and I'm using it in combination with the Pro Prime Multi Protect Primer. This is my first time using this primer, but when I bought this I said, you know, let's just go all in and use it how it's meant to be used with a proper primer underneath. And the primer has sunscreen and SPF 30 and I thought it would be good to maybe use a less aggressive sunscreen in the winter when I'm, you know, not out in the sun very much. Usually I would use a strong 50 plus, my L to MD sunblock, but I figured now there's no sun in Denmark. It's just a canopy of gray covering the sky. So I'm fine with SPF 30 for once. So anyways, onto this. The foundation is lovely. I had a feeling I would enjoy this foundation, but I did a lot of research before on Makeup Alley, Tim Talia, everyone I, you know, all the blogs. The consensus of this foundation is that this foundation is not a dewy luminous glow. So the glow part of the name is a misnomer. And in my opinion, that's completely true. So when I went into Sephora and I talked to them about it, they were like, oh, this foundation will give you a dewy glow. And I was like, is that true? Because I don't, no one says that. It, it apparently is a very natural finish. So I said, in spite of that, I know it's not going to give me a Vita Lumiere kind of glow, but I thought, okay, it's still intriguing. Let's give it a shot. I wish this product was called NARS Sheer Natural because it's a beautiful natural finish. It's not matte and it's not dewy. I'm not even sure if it's luminous. I would call it a satiny finish. If you imagine a satin hair ribbon, it gives a little bit of a, a hint of a light coming back. And that's what this does. It's not a glow, it's not dewy looking, but it's very fresh and natural. So I love the way this looks on my skin. Every time I've used this foundation, I've used it with the primer underneath, and the two go hand in hand. They look really nice together. I probably should try the foundation without a primer and see how, how it wears. But if I use these two together, I get about a good eight hours of wear time with my NARS Sheer Glow. It really melts into the skin nicely. I use my fingers. That's what they recommended. And I think you can use a brush, but why do that? I kind of like warming it up in my fingers, kind of spreading it in, starting at the middle part of my face and then working outward. And then at the end, I kind of do a patting motion and just make sure it's like pressed into my pores. And my skin looks really nice in the morning when I, when I do this. By the end of the day, it has worn off. And right now you're seeing me at the end of the day. I just got home from work. And it doesn't look terrible, but it's not as fresh looking, of course, as it looked this morning. All in all, I do my little five point rating scale with my foundations. My Face Atelier is a four. It's a good foundation. My Giorgio Armani Luminous Skin Foundation is a four. This one is a four and a half, and I'll tell you why. It's so beautiful, it's really great. It's a better color match for me than the other two products I just mentioned. It is just the perfect shade for me. I'm using the shade Gobi, and for some reason it's just made for my neutral undertone. I don't lean too yellow, but I'm not pink at all either. I'm probably more yellow than I am cool. But this one is perfect, it's a good neutral shade. I'm very fair at the same time, but I'm not like Siberia fair. That's the lightest color, I believe. So all in all, it's a perfect shade match. So I just was kind of missing that with my other two products. They were close, close enough, but this is spot on. So this makes me really happy. It's a great foundation. I'll probably be using it for a very long time. I'm happy with it. So that's good. I'm so hard to please. I mean, I'm looking for that five out of five. And right now, four and a half is pretty dang good. So that's my spiel on the foundation. Hope it was helpful and let's get into the outfit of the day. I'm sorry I haven't even mentioned why I have these on. These eyeglasses are a brand called Bulova. 
Glova. I think they make watches. And I got these, don't laugh, at Costco, at their optometry section. I actually saw the eye doctor there and he was wonderful. I've worn glasses for a long time. I have had so many pairs and my vision started to deteriorate a bit. And anyways, enough about that. I'm wearing eyeglasses because I have a minor eye infection in this eye. I don't know what came about. It's not pink eye or conjunctivitis or whatever you want to call it. That's super contagious and a little gross. I'm sorry to say it. It's not gross, but I mean, it's just like, I remember when I worked in government and in public service, they always warned us, if you have pink eye, stay home. And we were always like, I kind of want to get pink eye because you can stay home. It's so contagious. But this is just an innocuous little eye infection on my, on my lid. So my doctor gave me drops and he said, wear your glasses, no contact lens. So that's why I'm rocking these. I feel a little nerdy, but whatever, you can handle it. Okay, for the outfit of the day, I'll just walk you through the different pieces I am wearing. I changed positions because I think I can stand back further over there and you can get a good look at my amazing outfit. I'm just kidding, it's not amazing, it's fine. The shirt is from a Swedish brand called Rules by Mary. This is the only thing I have from that brand and I think it's cute. It's got these little ruffles and they continue on the back and it's got a full length zipper in the back. I hope you can see that okay. I have a black shirt underneath. You don't have to have that showing. I thought this was a cute detailing, the little ruffly edges. I remember an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer from 10 years ago and I always thought she wore such amazing clothes and she had this lacy frilly ruffly black top and it was so edgy and badass and yet really feminine at the same time. And when I saw this I was like, oh it's a Buffy shirt. She would wear something like that. It's got little sleeves and if you are Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, I would highly recommend checking out this brand. I think it's pretty big in Sweden but I don't think we have a ton of it available in Denmark. I bought it at a store in Elmagel in Nørrebro. So if you want to know, just message me and I'll do some sleuth work and try and find out where particularly it was. I can't remember the name of the store right now. I think it was close to the acne shop. The lighting just changed because my computer was glowing light and now it's off. So sorry about that. The shirt is Swedish, as I just said. I'm really into Swedish fashion right now. Jakegali le tort That was a little Danish. Dear Schempafin, that was Norwegian, I believe. Just, you know, I'm so trilingual. Just kidding, I'm not. I'm terrible at languages. Anyways, I'm really into Swedish fashion. I enjoy their clothes. I went through like a small little Swedish obsession for a few years after I moved here, and I think it's really funny now because if you live here long enough, you'll see that Sweden and Denmark are really not that different. They like to think that they're like polar opposites, but having a Swedish obsession is kind of like being from South Dakota and being obsessed with North Dakota, in my opinion. That's an analogy I can compare it to as an American. I love Sweden. I go there quite a bit. There's the city of Malmö, which is right across the Ørsten Bridge, and it's only like 30 minute journey by train. So I go there quite a bit, I shop. I bought this one in Copenhagen, but you can get this in Malmö at Olin City, that little store there. I'm wearing the shirt with just jeans that I purchased at The Gap. And I just got home from work and watched Rachel, Makeup Never Sleep, link below. And she was wearing jeans from The Gap and she was saying a quote from the movie Crazy Stupid Love, which is a great film which is, I am not better than The Gap. Or I guess the character in the movie says, be better than The Gap, and she said, I am not better than The Gap. I am not better than The Gap either. I really enjoy The Gap for certain things, for certain basics. So these jeans are designed to have like a snakeskin pattern and they are in like a blush brown color. So, and then I'm wearing some little heels that have a peep toe and I'm wearing socks underneath the peep toe shoes and I think that could be like a huge faux pas like in the same vein as wearing socks with sandals. So bear with me, please excuse me, give me a pass this time. It's because it's freaking cold out and I live in the tundra of the Nordic North. That doesn't make any sense, but it's freaking cold. It's so cold in this country. 
you have to wear socks with peep toe shoes or not wear peep toe shoes, but I want to wear peep toe shoes because they're cute and they look good with this outfit. So what's a girl going to do but slap some wool socks on underneath? I also have to wear this bad boy when I go to work. This is my knit hat from H&M. I bought it in Austria and I had a little poof, you know, those little snowball things on top. Uh, I had that but I cut it off because it was interfering with my bike helmet. <laughs> I have to wear bike helmet over this. I'll save the bike helmet for another outfit of the day. I am not going to put that on right now. But I am a girl that promotes safety and I believe if I'm on a bike and I don't have the best bike handling skills in Denmark, they've been riding a bike since they were like one and a half years old. I think, I don't know, maybe it's more like three, that's probably the average age. But they start really young and they are so skilled. They can just maneuver through anything and slink through the city and just never fall. I fall all the time, so I've learned the hard way to wear a helmet. And I'm not going to apologize for that, even though I get teased every day for coming and wearing my helmet. I don't wear it into the office, I take it off before I walk through the doors. But every now and then they spot me on my bike. and. It's Denmark. They care a lot about how you look here and about fashion and I don't know a single person who actually wears a bike helmet, which is a little bit sad in my opinion. Oh, there's a website called Copenhagen Cycle Chic. I'll link you below. It's really cool and it's a great website and a great concept. It's all about looking cute on your bicycle and looking fashionable. Cycling is huge in this country. Cycling is like the primary form of transportation in this country. So they are fashion conscious in general and they apply that to how you look on a bike. And I just remember looking at this website and there's all these cool pictures, but I was thinking that they should rename their site Copenhagen Cycle Hemorrhage because you do not get on that site if you're wearing a bike helmet. They don't like helmets. So I think that that's kind of bad. I don't know. That's just my opinion. You can take it or leave it. A lot of people are probably laughing. If you're from Denmark, you're laughing at me right now for being a little preachy. I'm sorry. I'm going to take this off. Okay, here's the outfit. These are the jeans. These are my boots. I have this purse, which I wear with an outfit like this. What am I talking about? I always wear this purse. I've worn it for the last, or used this purse. I almost burped, you guys. <laughs> Not very chic. I'm so sorry, you guys. This is the purse I use every day ever since I bought it at Target. It's a good buy. I don't know if it's still available. It has this adorable little purple pocket here. You see? These things zip down, and there's a purple peeking through. I thought it was really cute. It's comfortable. It looks all right. So this is my purse. I'm wearing a huge parka when I leave the house, but this is what the outfit looks like. And I have a black shirt on underneath here just for an extra layer of warmth for the cold country. This was random. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for watching. I hope everyone is having a beautiful day. See you next time. I stumble to the kitchen, pour myself a cup of ambition And yawn and stretch and try to come to life Jump in the shower and the blood starts pumping Out on the streets the traffic starts jumping With folks like me on the job